Good morning. It is great to see you here today. This morning for our meditation, I would like to share some words that uh, the Reverend Isaac Mundy, who is the minister of Trenton United Church, wrote about reopening the church. He posted this on Facebook, and thank you to Isaac for his permission to share this with you this morning. It's entitled, How to Reopen the Church. And he gives an excerpt from Exodus 19, the first eight chapters. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. And the people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Isaac writes, When I found out this week that the Ontario government is now allowing churches to reopen for worship, I was excited. I miss you folks. I miss worshiping together in our church building. My feeling was, whatever it takes, let's do it to make this happen ASAP. Then I watched one of the United Church webinars on the things churches should be considering before reopening. By the end of the hour and a half <clears throat> information video, I was about ready to curl up into a ball and hibernate until Christmas. Don't get me wrong, the webinar was really well done, but there's a lot we need to consider as we prepare for the future. In this week's Hebrew Scripture Lectionary passage from Exodus, the people of Israel are almost at the very beginning of their journey out of their time of bondage in, in Egypt. God has just told them, through Moses, that they are a precious and priestly people, and they have responded with the words, everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Then they hear the details of the covenant that God is making with them. For the next 12 chapters of Exodus, God lays out the details of God's plan for the people of Israel's life of faith together. At the end of God's webinar, Moses heads up the mountain with the great I am to ink the deal. Once they're otherwise occupied, the first words out of the Israelites' mouths to Aaron in Exodus chapter 32 are, Come, make gods for us. Who shall go before us? As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. While we know from other passages in Exodus that we can't see the face of God, at this point, we can pretty much hear God slapping the divine forehead in frustration. Almost before the chisel marks are dry <clears throat> on the tablets, the people are already throwing a golden calf party and have broken the very first of the Ten Commandments about not having any other gods before God. The situation is almost comical, but I feel like I can relate to where the Israelites were at. I'm sick of all the rules, the warnings, the guidelines that have come with the pandemic. I just want to be able to celebrate and have fun. Like the people of Israel though, right now we're being called to be patient and faithful with the new reality we've been called to live into. In the coming weeks and months, as we try to sort out the how-tos of reopening the church, we'll likely make a few false starts and mistakes. There likely will be a push and a pull in our own hearts and between members of our community as we figure out how God is leading us forward. Thankfully, like the Israelites, we have a God who forgives, who guides, and who loves us. As we take the next steps forward as a people of faith, let's return again and again 
in trust to this one who loves us and who will lead us forward on the road of grace. And is it is to this God of wisdom and mercy that we can say, thanks be to you. Thank you very much, Isaac, for these words for all of us to ponder as we consider reopening the church. And for people at Kamloops United Church, Council Circle continues to have uh, conversations on this matter uh, and will be meeting towards the end of August to talk about the plans for our congregation for the fall. Until then, uh, you will have the services that are available online. And if you don't get a link to them, just Google YouTube Kamloops United Church and all of the online services as well as the daily meditations are there. And now I invite you to join with me in prayer. Holy and life-giving God, as we move into the coming days, we would pray that we would be able to see, to feel you leading us forward. We ask that we would see you leading us forward, not only in the church life, but also in our own personal lives. We pray that each one of us would feel your presence with us and also going before us into the coming days. In Jesus' name do we pray. Amen.